Hey everybody, this is Ifrit from server 1018 and today I'm going to talk about the War of Kings event which will be starting on our server tomorrow after reset. It's a very exciting event and particularly for our server since this will be the first time competing for the tree it'll really be quite interesting. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what this event is and how to be successful at this event. So this is really a control game so we're going to be competing against the other alliances to control the tree otherwise known as the land of abundance which is located directly in the middle of our server map what's going to happen during the event is players will surround the tree to get as close as possible the reason for that is in this marshy area this dark green grass march speed takes considerably longer than it does when you're outside in the normal area where we're attacking creatures so getting as close to the tree is very very important additionally you will see that the tree is surrounded by four of these little plants one on the south one on the east one on the north and one on the west these are known as squirters and these squirters are very very important in this battle so what's going to happen is at the start of the event some players are going to rush to take the tree the first player to get there will occupy the tree then other players will try to either reinforce the tree if they are of the same alliance of the person that's controlling it so for example if i were in the tree the other vnf members would try to reinforce me just in the same way as you would at someone's base so just to jump back if you were to see where it says reinforcement you would do something very very similar for the tree where you're just reinforcing the player that is holding the tree everyone will be aware of who is holding the tree as the name of the player will appear in big bold letters on the front of the tree when it is being occupied if it is red that means there is an enemy alliance controlling the tree if it is blue that means that our alliance is controlling the tree so players will work to reinforce the player that is holding the tree to try to support them in holding the tree for a longer period of time. As time progresses, you'll be able to click on the tree and under info, you will be able to see the different alliances who have held the tree so far and what the percentage completion is for them to hold the tree long enough to win the event. So it'll count from zero to 100% in every member of the server will be able to see how that competition is going so there are a couple ways to kick people out of the tree so the first is to simply attack the tree with your marches and if you can defeat the person defending it um, and the other people reinforcing them you will kick them out and you will take over the tree this may be quite difficult. For example, if a very, very strong player is holding the tree, it could prove to be difficult to kick them out. So another way to get them out of the tree, which is also a very effective strategy, is to use the squirters. The squirters are a way to attack the tree without directly using your march to attack the player that is holding it. And how this works is just like the tree, players will try to attack squirters and control them. So if you attack a squirter and you're the first player to control it and you are occupying it, again, um, if it's a friend, if it's your alliance, it will be blue. If an enemy controls it, it will be red. So for an example, say I were in the land of abundance and I am controlling that in an enemy alliance. So a player from the alliance um, bro were to occupy this squirter what will happen is every 30 seconds this squirter will launch an attack which you'll be able to see on the map at the tree every 30 seconds that this happens it will hit the tree and it will severely damage a significant amount of soldier ants that player has in the tree who is occupying it so this is a way to 
work down strong players who are holding the tree without necessarily having to fight them head on. So you can let the squirters do the damage while you are nice and safe in that squirter. That being said, if you are in the squirter and an enemy is in the land of abundance, you can be certain that their allies will try to attack that squirter to kick you out. One way to protect that squirter, just like the land of abundance, would be to have your allies reinforce you in that squirter. Um, additionally, since there are four squirters around the tree, there's many ways for attacks to continue on the land of abundance. And it, and it will also be very helpful that there will be many alliances competing for the tree. So for example, we'll turn it around and say that Bro is occupying the land of abundance, and if VNF were controlling the squirter on the south, and another alliance such as PHL were controlling the squirter on the right hand side, both of those squirters would attack the land of abundance because they are not the same alliance as whoever is controlling the land of abundance. So this is a good way to coordinate with other alliances on the server to try to work together to kick out the player and alliance who is controlling the land of abundance. Now let's talk about one of the things that will happen in this event, which is soldier ants will get injured. So when you are defending the land of abundance or a squirter and another player attacks you, or if you're in the land of abundance and a squirter is hitting you, you will have severely injured ants. So there's two types of injuries and I'll just show you an example in an old battle report that I have. So we will use uh, an example here that has a lot of defeats. Do we have any? Okay, we will jump to this example here. So you can see in this battle report, there are two types of injuries. There are slightly injured and severely injured. Severely injured ants will be um, taken out of the battle for the future rounds. They will not be able to contribute to further attacks. As you can see in this battle report, it says it lasted four rounds. So those ants are knocked out um, and cannot compete. However, when a march returns to that player's base or if they are defending an already in the base, once the battle is over, those soldier ants become immediately healthy again and do not go into the healing pool. For severely injured ants, this is different. They are also incapacitated and taken out of the fight. However, they will be sent to the healing pool whether you are defending or they will go to the healing pool when you have attacked a player and that march returns back to your base. Now let's quickly talk about healing pools. So I'm going to go over to my healing pool here and you can see that if I click on the heal button, you can see the number of injured ants that my healing pools can cumulatively hold combined. And that is 171,000 severely injured ants can fill up my healing pools without me going over the capacity. If I were to go over the top of the capacity, the 171,000, any further ants that are severely injured will immediately die and I will not get them back. So this is a really important thing to keep track of because you do not want your ants to die. It costs a lot of resources to rehatch those ants and a lot of time or speed ups to rehatch those soldier ants. So do your best to try to avoid allowing them to die. And the way you can do that is by upgrading your healing pools. If you continue to upgrade them, they can hold more and more ants, which you can see here for each level. It's about a thousand ants that I can hold in my healing pools for each level that I increase the healing pool level. The other way to really have an impact on the ability to heal soldier ants is in the soldier healing evolution. This is very important and I recommend if you need to do a little bit of evolution upgrade before the tree fight, I would recommend focusing on this evolution tree. So what I have focused on is my carrier ants and the first ability 
is reducing the cost to heal my ants. So when they do become severely injured, I will have to pay resources in order to heal them. After a battle for the tree that could last many hours, so a lot of tree battles will last between six and 10 hours of fighting, um, this becomes pretty costly to continue to heal ants. So anything you can do to reduce the cost of the resources that you need to pay will be very, very beneficial in the future. The next one is the focused healing. This is very important because this increases the healing pool capacity of all of your healing pools. You can see I have mine right now at 60% uh, increased capacity, which is level 11. Before the tree event, I may try to get this up to 100% because this will just allow me to keep even more severely injured ants in my healing pool without them potentially dying. So I want to avoid that at all costs. So I'm going to try to upgrade this a bit for, further before the first tree fight. The next row is healing speed. So I have upgraded this to level 12, which makes it 100% faster for me to heal my carrier ants. So it'll be twice as fast as it normally would when I'm healing my ants. Um, this is also very important because if I have, say, 100,000 carrier ants that get severely injured, this could take me, say, 10 to 14 hours to heal them normally and this would allow it to only take seven hours which means i get to use my speed ups a lot more effectively which will keep me in the fight longer because the worst thing would be that eventually my healing pool start to get full and i've run out of speed ups and i've run out of resources to heal at that point i would have to stop competing because any further injuries would lead to ant deaths which i do not want to have happen so i'm doing everything i can to avoid that scenario by reducing the resources i would need to spend and the speed ups i would need to spend to heal those ants and then the next tier is the healing pool expansion. This gives me an extra healing pool to use. So you can see I've already upgraded this and I put it in my base to give me an extra way to increase my capacity on the ants that I will heal. Um, there's a couple of other things you can do too, like the dodge attack will increase the healing pool capacity as well. And there's a couple of other abilities about injured ants that can be treated above and beyond your healing pools if they were to get full. I haven't upgraded those yet because those are a little bit more um, later in the game evolutions. So I've only focused on the first few rows here that I thought would be important for the first tree fight. So that's all I wanted to talk about for the tree fight. If there's any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them.